This is the eighth video in the series for Excel 2013 and uh, in this video we'll try to look at some database functionality of that is built within Excel for sorting, filtering, you can freeze rows, um, you can create subtotals, custom list and also data validation. So we'll try to do an introduction of some database functionality. And uh, I'm going to keep a link to this uh, file so you can download it from the website. And if you already downloaded for the video number 7, it's actually the same material that I'm using. So usually in Excel, you get your columns. And then in the columns, you have headings. And within the headings, you fill up information. And uh, you can always set formatting on certain sections. So like for order date, I can click on C. I can either go to the number more button and I'll get the format cell options which is this or while I highlight I right click and I go to format cells and in here I can go to date and then I can choose if I want to see the date in this way. So there are many different formats available so I can choose this one and I click OK. So now it changes it to this format so I can see spell out my months. The same way if I had one for telephone number, I can go to format cells, I can choose special, and in there there is the phone number. So when you enter the telephone number, the brackets and the hyphens will be added automatically. So the first what I want to do is I want to look at sorting. So say I want to put all the countries listed in alphabetical order. There's only two, so I'll just do that. I'll click on the sort button right here in the corner and I can sort A to Z or Z to A so if I do A to Z now all the UK's are listed together I'm just going to scroll down and then after that the USA starts I can do the same thing by clicking on salesperson you see I'm not highlighting anything I'm just clicking on the top heading not highlighting the column just clicking in there and I can go to sort and I choose A to Z now you see all the B's are together and then the C's show up. And you, I can do the reverse process and I can do Z to A. I can click on date and I can choose to sort it by Z to A so that it will put all the new dates, new orders first, the latest one and then the old one. So if I do Z to A, there it is. I've just added some for this year. So it shows me that. And I can reverse the process by going A to Z. And the same thing will apply to order amounts. If I do A to Z, it will show all the low amounts first, and then it goes on to the high amounts. And I can go back to order and sort it by A to Z, so it goes back to this. So this is the first thing you can do, because this is, allows you to get to your information faster. Now, if you wanted to sort by multiple criteria, to do that, you will have to choose sort and choose custom sort. Now you see it automatically highlighted everything for me. I did not have to highlight it. So I can say, you know, first sorted by country, and then I want to add a level, and then in that particular country, put the salespeople in the alphabetical order. And now you can arrange it by whatever way you want it. One thing to keep in mind is make sure that this check mark is always there. My data has headers because your header is there. If it wasn't there, then you need to remove it. Because if you remove it now, it's going to take this words and it's going to jumble it with your information, which will be a problem. So I'll click OK. So now you see all the UKs are together and then it starts with B. Now it then it goes to C, D. Now when the USA starts, it's going to start again with alphabetical order starting in this case with C and then it will go on. So you can do multiple sort via custom sort option. So this is good, but now there is another option called filtering because I want to get to some really important information pretty fast. To do this, you can click on sort filter and then choose the filter option. So if you click it, you'll find that after each and every heading there is a drop down button. So I can now filter things. So first I'll just click here and I can say, you know what, don't show me UK, only show USA. So I click OK. Now it only shows me USA results. 
and I can keep on filtering even more if I want it. I can remove the select all so it removes everybody and I can say show me only this guy. So now when we have this person. I can go back to the same section here and I can choose to clear the filter. So I can do that individually and you'll see there is a symbol, a filter symbol there that tells me that I've filtered it. Now if I wanted I could always go to the sort filter button and then use the clear option from here. So it clears everything together rather than doing one at a time. I can also filter by date. So I can click here and I can say show me the whatever years I want and in the date filters I can say show me this month. So if I choose that. So I only see results for this month. I can click here and in the date filter there are lots of options show me last month. So this is from last month only. You can also do something like between and then I can choose a date and I can say show me from March 1st to July 31st. I click OK so I only see those results and so on and so forth. You can do last year, this year, last quarter, this quarter. So wherever you have a date this will work but it's very important that you formatted that column for that date otherwise this will not work. I can go back here use clear and if I want to remove the filter I can go back here and say press the filter button again so that the filters are removed. You could also click on the format as table option and then choose one of these styles and when you do that you will find and I click OK that it automatically puts the drop down buttons with the filtering there for me. I'll just hit undo for now. The next thing I want to talk about is what is called freezing a row because when I go down the page I lose my top heading. So I want to make it so that when I scroll down the top heading stays there. To make that happen I go to data. I believe it's under data. I always forget. I think it's under view. Yeah, view, freeze panes and from here I choose the option freeze top row. When I do that, there is a line that shows up underneath it. Now, if I scroll down, you'll find that the top row always stays there. And I can go back to view, freeze panes, and I can unfreeze. Now, if you wanted to freeze the top five rows, so you have to click on row six, go to the freeze pane option, and use the option that says freeze pane rather than freeze top row. So if I click the freeze panes option, there is a line showing up there and if I use the drop down button, now all the five rows are frozen. And I can go back and I can unfreeze. And the same way you can freeze first column or more than one column. If you click on the row cell B2 and I choose the option freeze pane, it kind of freezes the column and the row however it will only work in one direction so what do I mean by that if I scroll down the top row stays there now if I go sideways that first column stays there so that happens when you click on B2 and you choose freeze pane so I'm going to hit unfreeze so that is called freezing pane the next thing we'll look at is what is called subtotal. What subtotal does is very quickly give you a subtotal of whatever you have sorted together. So I'll do a simple one first. So say I want it, I'll click on country and I'll sort this A to Z. So now all the UKs are grouped together and the USA are grouped together. I'll go to the data tab and in there there is a button call command called subtotal I click it and it highlights my information so you don't need to highlight it and what I'll say it add each change in in the first row at each change in country because my countries are grouped together so that's the main thing to remember here because whatever is sorted should be on the first row so that when that 
section changes, it will put a subtotal. And I want to do a summation of, and there are other functions in here too, and the order amount, because the order amount has the value that I want to count or sum up. I'll click OK. And let's see, I'm going to scroll down, and when I come to the end of UK, and there it is, it puts the UK total. I can come back to data, subtotal, and I can choose to remove all. Now what I'll do is I'll click on salesperson, and I'll go to, I can do go to the sorting from the home button, or within the data, there is this A to Z button. So now all the salespeople are grouped together. So now when I start the subtotal, my first answer should be salesperson because my salespersons are grouped together. The rest will stay the same. I'll click OK. So now let's see. So there is Buchanan total. And then I'll see Callahan total after the C ends and then the D. There, there is the D and then the other person. So this way it does subtotals for me very quickly. And I can go back to subtotals and I can remove all. So next we will look at uh, data validation in which we'll look at how to create like a drop down button like a list and also how you can control whether to allow people to type certain values in certain columns or rows. So first I want to create like in this salesperson section I want to create a drop down button in which all these names are there. So first I'll click here and I'll just type some names. Okay, so I'll just type some names in here. Now I want to create like a drop down button in here. So I'll click on B. In the data, I'll go to data validation. I can click right here on the top or click in the drop down and then choose data validation. Now in the settings, I want to choose a list because I want a drop down button. And for the source, I can just highlight these cells or I can just click on G so that when people keep on adding more names here they'll keep on getting added to the list now I can do two more things in the input message so this is a message that will come up as soon as somebody clicks on the cell so I can say please choose from the list and I can go to the error option so that I can decide that what to do if the person does not choose from the list. Do I want to stop them from going forward? Or do I want to give them a warning? And then they will have a choice whether they want to accept it or reject it or any information. So we'll do the stop part first. So I'm giving it a stop message saying only pick from list. I click OK. Now there is a drop down button and you see when I point to it a message comes up and you can pick from the list. And if I go here and I add another name, now if I click here that name should have been added, Mary. Now if I click here and I try to type my name and I hit enter. You see it comes up saying only pick a name from list. Now do you want to retry or do you want to hit cancel? So if I hit cancel, it goes back to the original. I'm going to click here, go back to data, data validation. Instead of stop, I'll choose warning. And then I'll leave that message as it is. I'll click OK. So now when I click here and I type a mirror and I hit enter I'll get a warning message which says pick one from the list do you want to continue if I say yes it will let me move on if I say no it will go back to the way it was I see it won't let me continue I'll have to hit cancel and then it should be okay for some reason my computer acts up with the recording program so I get I have to like click away to get these things to change back. I'll click here again, 
I'll go back to data validation and this time I'll just use information and I'll click OK. Now this time if I try to type my name I'll get a different type of a message which is this information where I can choose OK or I can click cancel. So this way you can remind people and then you can control whether you want to stop people from typing anything else or you want to just give them a warning but allow them to type something else. Let's click cancel on that. And if you wanted to remove the data validation, then you just click on that column, highlight everything, data validation, and then you can just click clear all, and that will clear all the data validation. So that's one type of uh, data validation. You can also set other types of data validation. Say if I click on D, and then I can click on data validation, and I can choose in the settings that I only want to allow whole number, either between or I can say greater than, and say 11,000. So that means people will have to type a number greater than 11,000. And the same thing I can control with error alert by stopping them from going forward or giving them an option by choosing warning or just providing a gentle information. And also the same thing with input message. The same thing in the date, in the data validation. I can choose in the settings that this is a date and now again I can choose do I want them to allow a certain date between or I can say greater than so they can only add a date greater than a certain date. They cannot type anything they have in mind. So that's it for this video. In the upcoming videos I'll most probably get to pivot tables and pie charts and column charts. Thanks for watching.